that we're doing? Well, this is a little show we like to call Conversations, Cocktails, and Connections. I'm Amy Hester. I'm Emily Reeves, and I'm very excited about this cocktail tonight. So you, I don't even know what it is, but I saw berries, <laughs> and I might eat the bowl of berries. <laughs> Yeah, so it's got blackberries in it. So Yum. it's called a Ricardo Zarza, which okay. I think it's um it's like a twist on a bramble, I think is what I read on this uh on this background. Like Ricky Ricardo? I think it has to do with the guy who <laughs> like made the drink up. But it's a blackberry uh bramble type situation with tequila. Okay, okay. we like tequila. We like tequila and a traditional bramble has gin. Okay. I've never had um, a bramble. Me either. So I think I it thought you were saying ramble, bramble, bramble, bramble. So um, you gonna mix it up? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's do this. So um, all right. So you put all the stuff in a mixing glass, okay. mix it up, and then pour it in. And then we're actually gonna put the blackberry liqueur on top, like okay. after we kind of like what they did at the at the Clinton restaurant. Yeah. You know, he like put the oh like yeah on like top. A, a floater. Like a floater, so we got to do all the stuff and then add this. And um, this was really interesting. So I went searching for blackberry liqueur, which is cream de mur or something like that. Rock Town and um, and Rock Town has some. That's amazing. It's pretty. And it said, and I was like, well, was this maybe just like a blackberry whiskey or something? But it says liqueur on it. Huh. So okay. Um. Anyway, I was real excited to get you know a local a local yes. brand here. So what? So do you muddle the berries or no? They are just a garnish. Okay, because we got the black and an appetizer. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm okay, so <laughs> so, um, so the recipe calls for three quarters ounce of fresh lime juice. So we're gonna do an ounce and a half. Okay. So are you gonna use any of your um, um, lessons from forty two bar and table? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep following the recipes. I think. <laughs> Um, okay, we're going to do a half ounce of simple syrup. I made us some fresh simple syrup, so. Um, I almost, when he was making that cocktail the other day, um, I almost said a floater, but I was thinking he probably would be offended if I said a floater. <laughs> Why? I don't know, because I feel like people know floaters of, like, in, like, margaritas or, I don't know. I don't know. I guess you can always get a floater in anything, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so then an ounce and a half of tequila. So I'm going to put in three since we are doubling, doubling. Yummy. So how was your day today? How was my day today? You it's, know, it was so pretty. We had the door open all day today. It was today at the salon. gorgeous today. Yeah. In fact, I thought to myself, is there any place in the U.S. where you can get <laughs> summer, I mean, where you get southern fall weather year round? Yeah. Because if there is, uh, I am 100% moving there. Yeah. And, um... And, you know, I didn't take the time to look that up. But I did leave the house a couple of times today. Sorry, I splashed it in. Okay. Um, all right. I made sure to, I just didn't even care if flies, like, flew in the salon. Because I was just like, it felt so, so good nice, to have the yeah. fresh air. So nice. And this time of uh, our life with COVID, I'm pretty sure fresh air is probably better. Yeah, right? flies or no flies, yeah. I did not do a good job of pouring that equally. So, Amy, you're going to have a little bit more than me. It'll be okay. okay. Um, I need it. I just got off work. All right. So, then we're going to do three quarters ounce of this on top of each. Okay. So, so that is called, from Rocktown, Blackberry 40 Proof. Yeah, I don't know, man. Okay. We need to ask around about that. I wonder if they actually make this cocktail with that liqueur. At the at Rocktown, so pour it on top. Ooh, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. The last red drink I had, <laughs> you didn't care for. Right. It just was. It was just different. I just think we learned we don't want grenadine in our cocktails. For sure. <laughs> um, okay. And then we'll <gasps> Ooh. A garnish. Oh my god! I love how it like it's ombre. And then I got it straws. Ooh. All right, there you go. Very nice. Look how pretty. <gasps> yeah, cheers. Ombre. Mm. David. I like it. It's good. It is fruity. It is fruity. It's berry-y. I might need a topper of um, tequila. 
Yeah. We'll, 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 it's we'll, good. We'll I mean, I really that. like it. I'm going to make is... another one, maybe do a little bit more tequila, and then we can put a little okay. bit more in each of our glasses. Oh, that sounds great. Okay. Okay. Oh, who's our guest? Spencer, Spencer Jansen. Mm-hmm. I love this redheaded guy so much. <laughs> um, he works for the Arkansas Art Center. And I did, um, there was a period of time, like quite a few years, that I did a lot of volunteering at the Art Center. And we've become friends. And he actually used to be a bartender. So I I wish he was here with us to make us a cocktail. No. <laughs> but um, I'm anxious to hear about what's going on at the Art Center and how does something keep memberships going during COVID plus a remodel? Yeah. I mean, no, not a remodel, like almost a complete redo. Well, they're moved. They moved, right? Like they're moving well, locations and they're everything. They're moved temporarily to Riverdale, mm-hmm. but they're completely redoing the art center, mm. like completely. Um, at, yeah, like, I bet this has my, been an interesting six months for them oh, for sure. I can't even imagine. But anyway, I can't wait to talk to him and see what's up. All right. Well, let's do it. And hopefully he'll approve of our cocktails. Even. I hope so. I hope so. Bye. Bye. How are you? I'm well. <laughs> I, told, I said my favorite redheaded man <laughs> is joining <laughs> us. There's not many of us out there. <laughs> Spencer, this is Emily. Hey, Spencer. Hi, Emily. I don't know. If, have y'all met before? Maybe? I don't know. I Maybe in passing or something. I don't know. know that we have. I don't believe so. Yeah. But when I've said that on past podcasts, I have been corrected by the guest. <laughs> so I am trying to be careful now. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm getting older and my memory is failing me. <laughs> well, welcome to Conversations, Cocktails, and Connections. Um Thank you. Well, I appreciate the drink that you gave us. The the recipe, I did, we did not do that recipe. I can tell by looking at the glasses. And-, <laughs> <laughs> and you know why I didn't even pass it to Emily? Because um, I, I felt like it was a drink that we had had last night at 42. But actually now that I'm, I, I told her, and I don't think it was. Uh, I don't know what, the what was that one called? A Negroni. No, we have not had a Negroni. Okay. Dang. Yeah, I was but, suggesting a Negroni and a Boulevardier because it's okay. pretty much the same, except you're subbing uh, a bourbon or rye for the gin, and it would be nice to kind of taste those two together and then see yes. what the difference is between the two of them. Does a Negroni have Campari in it? It does. So okay. it's basically equal parts gin, Campari, and sweet vermouth. Okay. 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 I think I've made one before, but we haven't done it on the show. Okay. We'll have to do it and we will um, shout out Spencer. Yes, we will. (laughs) So we ended up making like a version of a bramble, but it's with tequila and blackberry liqueur instead of... Isn't it pretty? It is pretty. It is pretty. So I'm drinking drinking a Weller Foolproof. Mm. This is what I have. Let's see. There it is. Um, That's a really nice bottle, isn't it? It is. It is. I... um, Found out about it, and I bought it over at 107 Liquor. So I knew you were about to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, John you know. Crow, what? Yeah, so uh, John, let me know that was in, and uh, I've got that. So it's a treat for myself, and kind of save it for special occasions. So I figured. Yes. Out. So okay. are you in a little, um, little, not like club, but one of the people that likes to get these special bourbons whiskeys or whiskeys and bourbons and. I, I, I appreciate them. I will get them. Uh, my pocketbook doesn't. Yeah. The the reality is I I have some at my house, but I, I don't drink that much of yeah. the special stuff. I'll keep a bottle of good stuff for years. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. I, so, no, not to the level that some people, I've seen some people with collections that um, mm-hmm. liquor stores envious of. So mm-hmm. I'm not, not that level. Yeah. I mean, so, my go-to is like whiskey and Dr. Pepper. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I guess that's like collecting Louis Vuitton purses or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's that same kind of idea that Pappy Van Winkle has that weeded bourbon. Okay. That I have heard excited. of that because of the art center. <laughs> yes. <yeah>. And, then, <laughs> and I'll tell you later. Um, but um, I know that sounds weird. But um, <laughs> what? So we should do that. Maybe we should go in together and buy like a really fancy bottle and just have a little. We can do it. <laughs> Why not? I mean, 
But we'll have to lock it up so we both don't drink it while we're not together. I don't think it'll be a problem. <laughs> I'll hold it for you. I'll hold it and hold it for us? To me and let me know when it's time and I will bring it over. We can I'll start. We we can start like we have some we McAllen should... in in the okay. cabinet. I mean that's a good place to start, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I know nothing. <laughs> All I've ever heard of is um Pappy Van Winkle because <laughs> When Fountain Fest had come around, John Crow, who owns 107 Liquor in Sherwood, always donates a bottle. Oh, nice. And they have a, um, a raffle. Yes, we have a chance drawing. So, yeah. yeah. And it, it does what very you, well. You say chance drawing. Chance drawing. That's that's he, what it's called. The, the, the legal term. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, like, I was like, wait a minute. I probably just said that wrong. Okay. All right. Well, let, Spencer, what do you do for the art center? Let's, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's go there. Yeah. We've just jumped right in. Uh, we haven't even... sure, no, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm the director of membership and visitor experience at the art center. So uh, kind of oversee membership at under a thousand dollars and the visitor services team along with the museum store as well. So that's a newer role. I actually kind of just got into that role maybe three or four weeks ago. I've been doing membership, but these other, uh, parts of the art center just got put on me as well. So I'm excited because we're really gearing up for a big launch in 22. Okay. So 22, 22 is the launch. Cause I bet you've had an interesting six months. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how have you guys been doing that? I mean, I haven't even talked to you about that because art center is temporarily in Riverdale. Correct. So we moved, let's see, July of this year yeah well no last year july of last year we moved to riverdale 2510 river uh, cantrell in riverdale mm -hmm. and i remember we had this huge going away party at the old building august 24th you know we let people paint on the walls did a crazy awesome. party things are going smoothly we've got everything set up for this time i mean we were working with cows and we had artwork from our collection that was on display of all the cows branches and then COVID hit so it, a, a blessing disguise for us is the fact that we are going under this building renovation. Right. So I look at my peers throughout the museum world and they're having to close exhibitions and all these programs that they had lined up. Thankfully, we did have some of that lined up, mm -hmm. but we are, our pivot was, I'd say less severe than other museums, but we really transitioned to a digital world kind of uh, pretty quickly in a way that we've been wanting, but your hand was forced. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we've really done all of our classes. That was something that we had to cancel in person. So we teach youth and adults, basically any medium you want to learn how to draw, paint, sculpt, all that. And we've moved that online. So, so I've heard, that's I don't remember things. who was talking that's about so it. so interesting. I it was probably that. Mariah. Yes, it was Mariah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, she was talking about that because I was, I was like, that's so awesome. Because especially there's a lot of stuff besides probably pottery which maybe you can do pottery at home without, you just have to fire it at somewhere. We'll fire, yeah, some of those classes where it's a little bit more hands-on on the teaching yeah. from the pottery, some of the glass, glass that we're doing, that's not necessarily done, but we are firing for students. So that's there's awesome. kind of like, a, I don't want to say a work study, but um, kind of a work from home and then we'll fire the stuff for you. Yeah. But a lot of the drawing, we're even doing improv classes. So all that can be done online which is nice so how many um uh students can enroll as it set? It's, not, it, it's not like the zoom world one thing that's nice is like oh unlimited you can have 500 students we still yeah. want to offer that really intimate experience with the students so we try and limit it to you know 10 10 or so students so the teacher has time to really work with each person even though yeah. it is in that zoom world um and that that helps us to kind of really hone in on what they're doing um one thing I will say is we used to offer classes and they would last, you know, 12, 12 weeks. It was, yeah. you know, a quarter. Now we've condensed, condensed it and we offer them basically once a month. So oh. every month there's a whole new crop of classes coming up. That's awesome. Yeah. I, like I, I really love that approach because mm -hmm. even like both of us have taken classes at the art center and like, I would never, ever actually finish a yeah, class I didn't because finish like, it would be like, okay, something's come up and now I can't get there. And then I would get frustrated yeah. and you know, did not go like, so I only went to <laughs> right. classes. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. totally. Which, you know, the one thing that I loved about classes and I had never participated in the museum store, museum sale. Um, which mm -hmm. students students can sell their work, which I think 
it's almost kind of worth just to do classes where you can be in the museum cell and sell your products. Yeah. I mean, people will pay for their classes through the sales and at the museum sale. Yeah. Um, so historically we would have that originally it was on site at the art center, then it transitioned to off site, and we've had it at the fairgrounds for years. Um, well, the world we live in now doesn't allow that. So yeah, can you imagine where it would be? November, it would be? right? It is. So November 19th, I believe is when it starts and we're actually going to do it uh, virtually this year. Oh, like a, just like an auction type thing or how do you not, do that? Not or necessarily like an auction. We're going to let artists kind of open up their, uh, basically their websites and we'll have links to different artists' websites that sign up for it. So it usually would have it like fr Friday and Saturday mm -hmm. and it would be, you know, open the public Saturday and members night Friday. Now we're going to extend it for a month long thing. So we're going to have programming along with it. We'll interview artists. It's going to be a really cool experience. That's right up your alley. Yeah, I love that. She likes to um, not have to be in person as I much. know. Yeah. <laughs> online, uh, yeah. online purchasing. Yeah. Um, well, that's so cool. So you're saying that the artists will display it how they want to display. So they could have their own website. What if they don't have a website? We actually offer classes right now to teach them how to do that. Oh. So we know that some of our students don't know how to yeah. utilize those tools of, the, of the, the interwebs. So we say, okay, this is how you create that marketplace. This is how you do those sales. So we work with the students to ensure that they have the tools at their disposal to make those sales and participate. That's amazing. That's, yeah. that's really great. Oh my gosh. Well, have y'all been, have you been working the whole time at, in Riverdale or have you worked from home some? Or I've been working at been home. Working? I've been working the whole time. Um, okay. That's one of the things about being, you know, in, in development and fundraising is we're always working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been working from home probably mid-March when we were sent home. So I guess March 11th was the first case in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And then shortly thereafter, we, we went all home. I've yeah. started going in a little bit more. Like I spent about half a day at home and, or at work and at home. And it's kind of like, you know, you get back from school from summer and you run to everybody like, oh, what have you been doing? It's, it's yeah. like that every time you go in because you're seeing someone else like it slowly trickles in of, of staff coming in. Yeah. So. And we need that. Mm -hmm. I, I like the one on one talking to people and you want to just give them a big bear hug. <laughs> you do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just weird. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, have you, um, so how is membership? Like what is happening in the membership world? Because one, their obstacle from the very beginning pre-COVID was just a remodel. I mean, yeah. or, or a rebuild or whatever. That was already, you know, hard probably just trying to keep memberships up when you don't have a full permanent facility. So how do you do it now, COVID and that? <laughs> do you have an answer for me? Uh <laughs> So it's, it's been okay. Um, yeah. I don't want to sugarcoat it. I mean, we've definitely seen a hit because of the remodel. Um, yeah. We know that that was going to happen, like you said. We were doing better than expected. And honestly, we've done better than I think we would be doing even in the age of this pandemic. Um, part of it is we have an amazing membership base, people that are dedicated and you going know, to stick with us because they know what's coming. You know, we don't know what's happening with this pandemic, but one thing we do know is an art center will be opening in 2022. Mm -hmm. So people know that. That's like the yeah. little bit of hope that I have right now. Yeah. Is the world is crazy. You know, this is affecting everybody, but I see my silver line and our no. members are seeing that today. I am awesome. um, just by talking to clients and stuff. A lot of people really like, not for a permanent thing, but they like the fact that it's easy to go to Riverdale and have... Are we all keep something there or will you completely move everything out? We will be in MacArthur Park. Okay. And to be honest with you, when you, I don't even know if you have to walk in the doors, the moment you park and see it, you will forget about 2510 so quickly. Oh, um, 2510 is Riverdale. So, that's <laughs> so it, what you're going to see and experience is going to be it's nothing wait. like you've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, I was talking to, Someone, this was this was pre-pandemic. It was uh, at a gallery about a year and a half ago. And he was excited when he saw the plans. He said, uh, there's no building that I can think of in the state where I can go and spend the entire day. There's nowhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I agree. There is no place that 
we're going to provide a place where you can go walk in the park. You can go see exhibitions. You can take a class. You can see a theater performance or performing arts. You can then decompress in areas throughout the building. You can go to the restaurant for dinner or lunch. So we have this whole cultural living room that, that faces basically the skyline of Little Rock that faces north that you can just sit and just relax, have a cup of coffee. There's no building that I can think of in this entire state that you can fulfill an entire day and have a different experience every couple hours. And that's so, why you'll forget about 2510. So will you still be, like the art center's always been free entrance, right? You mm -hmm. haven't had to pay. Will it still be free after the reopen? Absolutely. That's amazing. Absolutely. Uh, and so, so y'all are staying in the same building, but you're remodeling and adding on, I guess. Added, yes, adding on extensively um, to the building and to the park. I mean, it's going to be almost six acres of landscaping as well into MacArthur Park. Okay. So okay. consider it. Yeah, it's just the building. It's uh -huh. more than that. It's an integration into MacArthur Park, including I love the. That. Yeah, so it it's going to unify that area the way it was intended. You know, yeah. decades it's ago. A, that's a beautiful um, park. Um, we we've got. I mean, of course, I've gone to Art Center a bunch, but. Um, they have mm -hmm. a dog park, so we'll take the dogs. It's been mm -hmm. a minute since so I've been there um, with my dog, and I can't. I haven't been in probably since the beginning of COVID. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, um, I bet there's a lot that's been done. Has it? Has COVID slowed down the construction? Not at all. Really? It. It has not slowed down. We haven't missed days. There hasn't been any halt to it. Even we thought maybe some stuff that was being shipped. None of that. And really it's all, it's employing our Kansans too, which is one of our favorite things is we're working with local businesses to get the supplies in, get the labor here. So it's, it's working around the clock. I yeah. implore everybody to go drive by. I go by once a week. You can see the building, there's fencing up, but you can see by, it. you'll just drive yeah. by and you'll, the, the sheer size of it will start to come right. into play. Yeah, I need yeah. to drive by for sure. Will, will the restaurant have outdoor dining at some point? Uh, or like some that... kind of, because I, I know there were like little, gar like you know where the classes were. I, I, <laughs> I've always loved the area where the classes were with the little gardens mm -hmm. in the center. I always thought those yeah. were so cool. You're so, yes and yes. So that garden aspect is still going to be there. My brother got mm -hmm. married where you're talking about, actually. Uh, um, well, that no longer exists, but there will be definitely green space off the classrooms. And then there will be dining for the restaurant that looks into the into MacArthur Park. So all that is going to happen. Like I said, you will be busy all day. Come I down. Wait. I cannot yeah, so. wait. Do you know how crazy it's going to be the first year? Your, your memberships are going to be blowing. Yeah crazy because <laughs> everybody's going to just want a piece of the action which oh, you know you so. want people to 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 support now but um everybody in town's going to want to see this place we we hope so and we feel the same way that's yeah. actually why i was in the office today we i was working with the team to kind of build out our timeline from yeah. opening to today what are those major milestones what are we doing what campaigns are we looking at to get people engaged how are we working with the community to get them involved so it's we are trying to figure out all those steps and it's exciting to look at that. Um, so the museum store, is that online right now? So everything yeah. you're selling is all full online? It is. And we're going to be launching, I hope on October 5th, it should be the day we're going to start offering even virtual shopping where you can call in and do FaceTime or Zoom or whatever you want. We will have uh, Katie, who's our museum store manager, walk around the store oh and shop with you. So she'll say, okay, do you want to see this? Do you want to go closer? Let's look at that. Let's zoom in. and Or try a piece of those. jewelry on. Uh -huh. <laughs> and she'll show that to you. And then she'll either, we do home deliveries, we do curbside pickup, whatever you want, we'll make that work. And then members, of course, get 10% off anything they buy. Oh, so, I, yeah. every, time I, every time I go to the museum store, I find something I want. <laughs> every time. It's good stuff, and it's a range of like local artists stuff they make. We have even art supplies for our students to crafts. We, you know, I, I buy most of my presents for my family there. Yeah, I mean, you could buy a baby gift. Oh you yeah. Could buy, you could buy um, something for your house. Obviously, something for your house, but you could buy jewelry. I mean, it, books. Books. Like books are books. our big seller. Yeah. That's that's big for us. We have a lot of puzzles too. People probably didn't think, you know, you go to Walmart, you go to yeah. you know, Barnes Noble, you couldn't find a puzzle. We had them. And uh, these puzzles are tough. They're like gradient puzzles, 
where it's uh -huh. just like all the tones of purple. Like I'm not even trying. Okay, I've seen this. I, I actually yeah. saw somebody on Instagram that was doing a completely black puzzle. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. my Lord, I'm glad you got time because I would <laughs> not have the patience to do that at all. But um, so also you're real. I know Spencer from the contemporaries group um, that I was involved with a, a while back. It seems like forever, but it really wasn't that long ago. But um, that was the most fun of my life. I love the contemporary <laughs> group. I love the art center. And how are y'all doing the auxiliary groups right now? Like how, how does everybody keep together? And you know, the big thing, like I know when I was there, it's I mean, with anything, it's just like to be present and to keep people active. So you don't like fall off and lose members as you're mm -hmm. probably used to. But I mean, same thing with auxiliary. How do you, what are y'all doing right now? It's, uh, you know, it's still that virtual world, but yeah. looking at it and trying to do social aspects of it, that's, that's kind of the, the tricky, but fun part to figure that out is, mm -hmm. you know, we've done some lectures. We've had some artist talks. I went and interviewed, uh, Chris Hines, who was the contemporary award winner for the Delta that's still on view online. You can see that exhibition. So I went to his house, interviewed him. And people could ask questions and we're looking at one of our next events for the contemporaries is we're going to release some products with Rocktown. They're going to, they have some oh. pre-bottled cocktails. And we're using Rocktown tonight. <laughs> I love Rocktown. It's good I stuff. Know. Yeah. And they're going to come and talk about that product. We actually have a, a coloring book page from one of our pieces in our collection, just for some, for us to do something together as a group. And yeah. then we'll probably discuss that piece as well. So if you learn about that piece, it's uh, Diego Vera's uh, Dos Mujeres. So it's, that's currently, I believe in Cleveland. That piece oh wow so, so is a lot a lot of the um pieces are they traveling right now that the art center owns there because, is a, a there is a good stock having to hold like store it since you're remodeling how does that work <laughs> with, with all the super uber big stuff like how does that work yeah so we do have stuff that we partner with cal so central arkansas library system has each branch has a curated collection in those branches so we worked with them so we recognized okay the hillary rodham clinton children's library we put stuff in there that we know kids would be gravitating towards so we could engage them. We did that with the Lehman Library as well. We looked at, you know, the surroundings there and made sure that the collection that we brought in represented that library. Uh, so the other thing we did, like you said, travel, we have pieces that are all over the country, all over, maybe not the world, but they have gone international recently as well. We had a Degas that was in Paris at the Museum d'Orsay that wow. has come back and now is in DC. So wow. Cleveland, a lot of the galleries throughout Arkansas, so the Bradbury Museum, um, UA Little Rock has an exhibition up right now that's part of our collection. So yeah, it's, they're out traveling. The good thing is you don't have to put a mask on a pot. So it yes. just goes out and we can, we can get that out there. So being 2022, when you guys relaunched the new building, is something as an exciting exhibition already in the works or is this something, I mean, do you already have it set that's going to be like your grand opening bah, thing or? That is being, <laughs> that's all those things that are being developed. That oh, come on, tell us a secret. Of, I don't know. I don't know. The <laughs> answer. That's the stuff I don't know that it's in developing stages that we are definitely lining up. When I first started at the Art Center, one thing that kind of blew my mind is that they were planning exhibitions more than three years in advance. Wow, and that's wow. how they, so we would have an exhibition. I remember 30 Americans came out and it was this beautiful collection of African-American artists. And people came in, they're like, oh my God, it's so timely. And it, it was to what was happening. This was probably five years ago. And it was, but the reality is that was booked three years plus mm -hmm. in advance. Wow. And so it's, it's really cool to see how those things evolve into what they become. I can't imagine working for an organization that plans three years in advance because everybody I work for plans three minutes in advance. <laughs> I'm more so that way myself. Yeah. I, I'll let, I'll let curatorial and exhibitions deal with that. That's not my strong suit. That was tough today to work to 22 and work backwards to today. Yeah. It, it was like a four or five hour long meeting that we had. So oh, man. Oh my this, this bourbon is tasting great right now. <laughs> <laughs> and your chair and your sofa. Mm -hmm. you're sitting <laughs> so how have y'all had um, a new staff come in or are you kind of 
holding out on staff because of what's going on or um because there's a new director we we have a new director dr victoria ramirez she started october first i don't know if that was her official start day but that was groundbreaking in macarthur park and she was there for that oh, and that wow. was kind of the big announcement I, so, I met her at the Christmas party, the contemporary Christmas yeah. party at John Crow's, and she was so nice. She's and great. seemed very um, like cool and just, I don't know, I just can see by just meeting her that just that one time, I'm like, okay, she's she's going to make things happen. That's going to be yes. really fun. She's definitely a, a great asset. And there's things that I've seen that I can't share about the building yeah. that she has looked at. I mean, she hit the ground running. And she noticed some things and changed them. And I was like, I thought that was already in the plans. She's like, no, let's, this is going to make sense. It's like, wow. So these little things that she's doing, I'm seeing behind the scenes are going to pay dividends in the future. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And wow. she's fun. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's a, like you said, she's approachable. So yeah. I, I, she I totally that, was approachable. I think I started talking to her, not knowing who she was at first. And then when I yeah. found out, I was like, well, holy crap <laughs> she's super cool i mean not that they shouldn't be cool but i mean it's just it's just nice when you can have a conversation about just anything and it doesn't have to be um i think some people get intimidated by people that are in like a museum type like not saying i don't want to say snooty or anything and i haven't really known you know i don't know anybody for to give an example but i'm just <laughs> saying like if they don't know how to talk about art, they don't know the lingo, then you're intimidated by speaking to somebody that knows right. everything about the art. I think it's, it's kind of twofold. It is, it's part of her title, being an executive mm -hmm. director. That's part of that. My mom told me one time, she said, you're not intimidated. She's a CEO of Girl Scouts. She said, when people had that same re reaction to her, she said, I'm a person. You're not scared of me. You're scared of the title. And that's just a title. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm a person just like everybody else, and and I think you saw that in in the yeah. at the Christmas party. And the thing about the museum and art is back in my bartending days, I'd have the same discussion about even wine, and yeah. someone would come in and be like, fifteen dollars for a glass of wine? That seems ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And same thing, they'll look at a, a a painting on the wall and they say, oh, I could do that. Why is it in a museum? Why is it in a gallery? Well, what I tell people is like what you like. That's all that matters. But it's through education experience that you start to understand and appreciate a lot more. So then you can know why it's $15 for a glass of wine. You understand why that piece is hanging on the wall. If you don't like it, that's fine. That's not for me to like shove down your throat. So yeah. that's 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 my personal view. Yeah. I mean, art is subjective. I mean, we all, I mean, I may like something and you hate it, but I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's what's amazing about art. I mean, I love, I like to paint when I can. I'm not great at it. I always think that I can copy some kind of abstract. And let me tell you, no. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I can art. do that. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> no. I've, it ends up being piece. like, if you could see what it tried to be and <laughs> what it evolved to be, then it's, you know, but you know, it's so, I mean, I enjoy doing it. It's a release. I don't do it often enough, but, um, I really am looking into maybe these classes because yeah, should, we, we've talked a lot because we like classes. Uh -huh. We do. We do. And we should, maybe we should do one together. Oh, that would be so fun. Yeah, we should do that. <laughs> it's one day a week for a month. So you're really, you're, you're getting in there. You're trying to, if you like it then go for another month, just keep going. Yeah. So it's a great way to do that. And let's be honest, we're all stuck at home. So it, <sighs> it's something to do that's outside yeah. of your norm as well. You're going to meet new people. Yeah. Um, and you will be impressed by yourself. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yes. Um, right, right in time to give somebody a Christmas gift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or if it doesn't turn out well, you can just come to the museum store. And then yeah, exactly. That way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you said you were a bartender. And yes. I know this about you, but you've bartended for a long time at the Capitol Hotel, right? I did, I did. Where, um, was, go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I, I bartended there for ooh, six or seven years. Um, I was out of a job. I, I didn't know what I was doing and I applied. This was right when they were opening. So they hadn't opened after the remodel. And I walked in with no experience behind a bar except for like slinging drinks in my dorm room. And <laughs> they hired me. That's amazing because I've always heard that they're really hard to 
get on with. And what a great experience. I mean, I'm sure you met some interesting people. I did. I did. It was, I mean, celebrity wise, I met a crazy amount of famous people came through Little Rock that you never know. Um, I I think Robert Plant was my biggest coup. Like, that's really cool. Wow. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Robert Plant. There was one night when they did the West Memphis Three and it was Eddie Vedder. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. I remember Johnny Depp. He, (laughs) Johnny Depp was uh, smoking a joint out back when he met the GM. (laughs) <laughs> and he came in through the back door and he did his thing and then I remember running into him in, in, the, in the bowels of, of the of the hotel and it was back behind Ashley's kitchen when you know, it was Ashley's back yeah. then back where we did the baking and the, and the sweets yeah and Johnny Depp had an entourage and it, really? it yes he had uh, people like that kind of helped school, guided yeah. him, but it like, wasn't like his friends, like literally, like like Mark Wahlberg would be like bringing all his buddies. <laughs> and I, I just I don't see they, Johnny Depp doing that for some reason. I think they were helping him get to like point A, point B. Employees. Um, no, no, it was no, it was like his people because he stopped. I remember he stopped by all this bread that was just finished baking. This was probably two in the morning like, or something. I'm so hungry. He stops by. He's like, oh. <laughs> Like Jack Sparrow, you don't even play a character. That's just you. And one of his handlers is like, Jonathan, Jonathan, we got to go. It's time to go upstairs. Jonathan. So, they, yes, they called him Jonathan. Jonathan. Yeah. Come um, on, cocktails. Yeah. Ben Harper sat at the bar, my bar that night. Ooh. And he, he was like, he shook my hand. He sat down. He's like, hi, I'm Ben. I was like, I know. Is like, he short? Yeah. Is he uh, like no, really, short? really short? Really? Uh, yeah, Eddie was tiny. Um, Eddie, like I know him. Uh, yeah, you know, hey, you do. <laughs> you do. You have spoken to him. You can call yeah. him Eddie or Dave Edward. Dave Chappelle was cool. You could call him yeah. Edward. Dave Chappelle. I bet Dave Chappelle was really cool. Yeah. He he actually like canceled uh, an appointment. He had in Oklahoma City to hang out extra nights because he just loved it. Yeah. He's like, oh, the people down here are great. I don't get bothered. It's like, I just can go about and do my thing. He's a big motorcycle rider. So he was out riding his motorcycles. That's awesome. uh, met some local bikers, hung out with them. But yeah, it, it was it was great. And I was there at just like this pivotal time of the hotel yeah. when it was creating its identity and becoming its you know mark on the map. And it's cool to see those people that I worked with go out yeah. and create really Arkansas's food identity and drink culture. You know, you're right. Mm-hmm. You're so right. Because yeah. I feel like, I have waited tables like a long time ago. Um, I f- don't you feel that people that have bartended or waited tables, like they are so, cr- they're a lot of them are cr- real creative. They can't sit behind a desk. They've got to be kind of doing their thing. And mm-hmm. um, I, I think that they, that people learn a lot from, I mean, it's not just like, oh, they don't have a job. They're just waiting tables. It's like, there's so much more. I mean, People can't even count money back, for God's sakes. No. I mean, I know that's the dumbest mm-hmm. thing, but I mean, that drives me crazy. It, yeah. It, and it's also <laughs> those, those soft skills that, you know, mm-hmm. employees are looking for. Yes. It's how to read a room, how to read a person Yeah. in a couple seconds, you know, knowing if you want to talk, if you don't, leave you alone, you know, just those things. I mean, just. Yeah. Oh, my memory is so good. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. To be able to look down a bar at 15 and know everybody's drink order plus the Rolodex of drinks. And it was fun. It was an adrenaline rush. Yeah. I have, I have dreams of waiting tables. I mean, I'll have like anxiety dreams that I'm actually present. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. like present time and I go into the restaurant and I'm like, Oh yeah, they need my help. And I start helping, but I can't remember the numbers of the tables. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, I don't know what to do, but I can do this. Actually, I had one similar the other about three months ago, but, but I could never be a waiter. The moment I stepped beyond that bar, I froze. I was so lost. I knew table number, but it just confused me. And I, I just can't, I can't do it. I, I, the skill of waiters and waitresses is beyond what I could do. Mm -hmm. So I always am impressed by that. Yeah. Well, um, so what do you think will be happening in the next six months? I mean, what, like around the holidays with the art center, I mean, you guys just need memberships to come up. I mean, um, are y'all doing any kind of, um, fundraising that would be virtual? we'll We'll do end of the year fundraising. Um, 
we normally do that. Memberships are always a great Christmas present. Um, we we will offer actually discounts to all the people today. So if you go on our website, hey. Arkansas, yeah, ArkansasArtsCenter.org, and on the coupon code, type in RED20, you get $20 off any membership level. So we figured that, that was a so a fun nice. Yeah. That is so nice. Thank you. Yeah. That is but awesome. It makes a family membership uh, $65 for the entire right. year. So yeah. it's a, and it's also tax deductible for, for you and your family, which is which, nice. Which also what, tell say, tell all the discounts you get with membership, which is like school. You, yeah. So those classes we were talking about, the store, you get 10% off of classes and also in the store. Um, we do just member newsletters to keep you informed. That's the other thing right now. While we don't have the building that we have that we're going to be opening in 22, it's really staying informed and, you know, knowing what's happening before any other, anybody else. So kind of stay on the forefront of that communication and just being plugged into what's happening with us. Yeah, that's so awesome. That also includes that museum school sale that you talked about. So that will be launching, you know, that's going to go for a month. So that's going to be November 19th through December 18th is when okay. we'll have that. Let me just be clear to say, when you say student art, yes. it's not like four-year-olds doing art. I'm telling you, these people are That's amazing. Yeah. I've seen some of the best pieces of art at that school sale. And um, and the teachers, don't the teachers put stuff on too? Absolutely. I mean, I'm looking around my living room right now. Probably half of it is from that sale. Yeah. And oh, I'm wow. Just, kind of snobbish just to yeah. throw it out there so it's it's really good stuff yeah. and you know with it being online hopefully we'll have a lot more people but the other thing is you get to know those people yeah um they're here in arkansas you're supporting local arkansans doing something they love so you're giving back which is really nice too by supporting them mm -hmm. uh the first time i sold an artwork i just was so elated um it <laughs> It, it's this weird feeling that you just can't express. So yeah. it's nice to give someone that feeling as well. Yeah. Well, so how, how, what's the Instagram, what, what's all the social media um, plugs for people to find the art center? Sure. So arc arts, wait, I'm horrible at social media. I'm the worst. <laughs> person. And I had them email this to me earlier. So I remember it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Instagram and Twitter is arc arts center. And that's for both of them at Arc Arts Center, and it's A R T S. Okay. And then our Facebook page is Arkansas Arts Center. We have started a new uh, Facebook group, I believe. I, I don't, I don't know the difference between a group and a page and all that stuff. But go on our Facebook, and then we have Arkansas Arts Center Amplify, and that is what we're doing to really reach out to people during this time of of COVID. To it, it's what it is, it's amplifying our voice and our programming to people throughout. We are reaching people all over the country. We have members in multiple states. We have people from, I think last time we counted, it was 44 states viewed the Delta exhibition that's online right now. Wow. And that's, you know, in part because of this Facebook page. So who won Delta this year? It was Aaron Calvert. Ooh, he's, that. yeah, he's great. He's a ceramicist out of, um, Oh, 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 I should know it. I just emailed him too the other day, okay. but I think he teaches, he teaches uh, maybe at Ozark or something. Yeah. So, yeah. Great stuff. He, yeah. That's amazing. He was in it a couple of years ago with always facing South there, I believe. So we, we've had his work in a couple of times and he's definitely deserving of this award. That's awesome. Very yeah. cool. Makes me want to get online right now and look at everything. I know. <laughs> I know. Great. I think that's what's going to be in my future this week. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and the nice thing is, is with it being digital, so typically that yeah. exhibition will be up for a couple months. We extended it because why not? Yeah. We can. There, there's no harm in it. And that also allows us to also extend the programming. So most Tuesdays uh, at noon, we do an artist talk. And an interview. So we might go to an artist that's in the Delta. We might go visit their studio and hear about the work or hear about what they're working on currently. So we did one of those today. Um, we have more coming up. That's all on the, on our uh, website as well. So those are done through zoom, but they're, they're okay. really good. So they're all in the archives of like, you can, you, you don't have to watch it live. You can watch it. Yeah. Both. You can watch it live. Mm -hmm. it, the good thing about live is you get on there and you can actually ask some of the questions, but all those are archived oh, as well. That's awesome. Nice. Um, one more thing I want to ask is, um, and just because I loved the contemporaries. Um, so when you are a member, you can also 
be asked if you want to be a member of um, an auxiliary group. Mm -hmm. So it's an additional, what's the additional cost for that? So for an individual, it's $25 for the contemporaries okay. and $40 for a couple. And it more it than- for itself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was I mean, joking with, some friends told me the other night that they, this was obviously pre-COVID, but they came to an event, a contemporaries event, and they were saying, you know, we paid more for our babysitter tonight than we will the entire year for this membership. And yeah. that includes food and drink and yeah. just the social fun and, you know, meeting artists. I mean, this group is selecting artwork to be purchased for the Arts Center. That's something that yeah. they did. And it, it's a it's a really cool group to get involved with. Well, so it cool. was, it's, you know, yeah. sometimes it's like, oh, that's what makes so great about like looking outside your your group. If, mm -hmm. you're, if this is something that you're interested in, it's so humbling and nice to meet new people and just get out of your comfort zone if just because your friend's not doing it, you can make some new friends. And Absolutely. I mean, right. I mean, mm -hmm. it's yeah. fun. Expand it's just, your circle. Yeah, yeah. Expand your circle. Exactly. Yeah. And so. it's fun for me to watch that because I, I get to see it kind of, I'm involved, but I'm also a little bit on the outside. So I can yeah. see those people who come in and then I hear them, you know, at things talking about making weekend plans. And yeah. I mean, obviously this is all pre-COVID, pre but yeah. It, yeah. 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 That's awesome. Okay. Well, so I'm so excited to have you on. I could talk to you like all night. So, um, but it's let fun. us, you know, we, we want to get membership. So we, we want everybody to, um, use the code Sign red up. 20, red 20, support, you can support guess the where local arts, support yeah. local. Yes. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. It's, uh, we got a lot of fun things coming up and, you know, membership's going to be a great and way let, to stay connected. Yeah. And let us know. And like, whenever you have something, um, when things start kind of opening, let us know. Maybe when we can venture out of the kitchen, we'll come to her. Yeah. So, so are y'all gonna take this on the road when you can? Then are you gonna? Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I hope I hope so. Um, it's actually Emily's probably like, oh my god, we have to take so much equipment. It's it's <laughs> it's a, it's a labor of love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she she just needs to teach me how to break <laughs> everything down, and because she's the equipment person, and um, so I can help a little bit more. <laughs> Yeah, it's, but it's, yes, we will. We will yeah. go places, and we have gone some places. Yeah, we have. Uh, you know where where caution Safety can and, be yeah. taken into into consideration. But yeah, yeah, it's we're going to be getting out yeah. and about. It's just hard okay. because during this time, we don't want um, people just necessarily coming into her home because we're at her home. You right. Know? So we're keeping things safe, and as everybody yeah. should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes when it when it's safe i'll come in and we'll do we'll make cocktails together we'll, i would love it yeah so, i would love that so yeah that's always okay. fun <laughs> thank you so much spencer Long thank you. pleasure thank you nice to meet good you good to see you good to see you too <laughs> bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.